Today we're going to talk about compositions of functions. And the first thing we need to talk about is this new operation you probably haven't seen before, which is this circle. It is it means to compose. And we're going to kind of see how that works. It's an operation that's just like uh, multiplication or division or addition or subtraction, but it's specifically for functions. This doesn't like you can't compose two numbers, but you can compose two functions. And so generally when we see this operation, it looks like if I take the function f and I compose it with the function g, and then I again, like normal, have some kind of input. Um, it kind of looks like the word fog a lot of times, um, but that's the idea behind it is we want to say like we have the function f composing with the function g. Let's look at some examples of this. So let's say I have a function f that is 2x minus 1, and I have some function g that's 3x plus 5, and I want to compose the two things. Well, first I kind of want to write composition on what it really looks like. If we say composition, we really want to write it the function f, the function g of x. And if you look at these parentheses and kind of how they're written, what it means to compose a function is it means to take the, the inner function here and plug it into f. So I want to take g right here and plug it into f, or make um, g the input into f. This is how it kind of looks when we write it. So we put f as the outer function, which is 2. But instead of writing x, my input is now g, which is 3x plus 5, minus 1. So I put f as my outer function, and I put g inside of f. Now we would just kind of go through and solve. So I could distribute this here and get 6x plus plus 10 minus 1, which that could simplify to be 6x plus 9. And that would be f of g of x. Let's look at if we wrote it reverse. So maybe I wanted to compose g of f. And so if we want to compose g of f, I wonder if we get the same answer as f of g. Well, let's see. If we have g of f, this would really be written as g and f inside of g. So then we would take, now instead of plugging g into x, we're going to take f and plug it into g which will give me 3, 2x minus 1, plus 5. Again, we plugged in f into g's function. Again, we would want to distribute this. And I would get 6x minus 3 plus 5, which would give me 6 x, whoops, yep, 6x plus 2. And as you can see, our other answer was 6x plus 9 and 6x plus 2, so it does matter on the order on which we plug which function into the other. Let's try a couple more examples. Okay, so here's the next example. These are probably a little bit more common when you actually want to plug a number in for it. So, um, again, I'm going to rewrite this to see to try to make it make a little bit more sense. Um, but um, when we read this, it should be written as f of g of 2 this time. Now, here's the easiest way to do this one. If you read this, we want to plug 2 in for g, then figure out what g is, and then after we do that, plug that in to f. So it's kind of this, plug 2 into there, figure out what that is, and then plug it into f. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to plug 2 in for g, and g of 2 would be 5 times
times 2 plus 4, which we can do pretty easily, and that would be 14. And then I want to plug 14 now into this f function. So let's rewrite that as 3 t to the th or 14 to the third minus 5, which then this would be f of g of 2. Again, I just took 2, plugged it into there, evaluated that, and found that that was 14, and now we're going to plug it into f of t. Now, I don't know what 14 to the third is off the top of my head, so let's go 14 times 14 times 14. That's a big number. So 2744. minus 5. Again, I don't really want to do 3 times that big number in my head, so let's just times that by 3. So 8232. Two. And minus 5. Um, again, my mental math is not the best. So 8227. Two, and that is the final answer. Again, the big idea behind a lot of these things is take the innermost thing, plug it in, plug it into that, and then keep plugging up the chain. Let's do one more. Okay, now we have g of f of 3, so I'm going to rewrite this again to make more sense. So we have g composed with f of 3. Again, my goal is going to take 3 and plug it into the inner function, and then after we get this answer, we'll plug it into that x and that x right there. So let's first get this answer. If you have 5 times 3 minus 7, that would be 15 minus 7, or 8. So that's what f of 3 is. And now we're going to take that, plug it into both x's. So when I do this, g of f of 3 would be 3 times 8 squared minus 4 times 8 plus 2. Well, because of order of operations, we'd have to do the squared first, so that would be 64 times 3 minus 32 plus 2. That's going to be a big number. Um, I'm going to double check to make sure I don't do this wrong. So 192. minus 32 plus 2. Um, that will give me 160 plus 2, which is 162, and that is my final answer. Again, this composition of functions, I think, is not too bad once you get the hang of it. You always take the inner function and plug it into the outer function, which in, that, in this last case was backwards for us because our inner function was f, and we plugged it into g. So try any of these problems, and let me know if you need any help.